everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Premier Chariat. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents in the United States on a regular basis, also an associate professor of medicine, two large medical schools in the United States. We've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology, and uh, today our topic is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, another very important part, and it's an actually an autoimmune thyroid. Thyroiditis, the other nerve, if you uh, want to use it. Okay, first we have to define it. What's the definition? Let's look at a chronic autoimmune process and the lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid, and it can have like a painless goiter, also could be a presenting symptom. Now, let's look a little bit of epidemiology. Again, females is very common. The female to male ratio is like seven to one. Okay, and the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the world or more likely in the United States and the age also we need to go like 30 to 50 years of age okay now risk factors <clears throat> let's start with the genetic and you are HLA DR3 DR4 and DR5 and then CTLA4 vitamin D receptor gene is involved Turner syndrome and Down syndrome may be like involvement also there and let's look at the other causes like environmental the pollutants and the dietary I mean anytime you take like high iron diet low selenium diet and then uh, medication interferon alpha IL-2 and the infection any type of viral bacterial and then could be pregnancy you got radiation exposure and finally stress also comes into play okay those are the <clears throat> risk factors associated with it again a big genetic component is also there now let's look at our pathophysiology we got a nice beautiful diagram up here okay again this is an autoimmune thyroiditis right so what is an autoimmune body <clears throat> recognize their own cell as an antigen and start attacking it, right? So let's go back into detail what happens in this case. There's three mechanisms if you look at it. First one is mediated through T-cell mediated, cytotoxic, CD8 cytotoxic T-cell get activated and then <clears throat> T-cell mediated cytotoxicity and thyroid follicular cells are destroyed. Okay, very important. The second uh, action is like you got CD4 TH1 cell mediated that activate interferon gamma and results in the activation of macrophages. Again, same thing, thyroid follicle cell is kind of destroyed, cell death, okay? Third thing is uh, involved in all these antibodies we talk about. Mainly when you talk about antibody, you have to bring in plasma cells. So plasma cell get activated. You got anti-thyroid antibodies. Mainly you got <clears throat> thyroid peroxidase enzymes, uh, antibodies against it. And then you got thyroglobulin against the thyroglobulin uh, um, antibodies there. And then there's THS receptor blocking antibodies. And what do they do? They go through the FCS receptor pathway, natural killer cells, again, um, antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity, again, cell death, follicular cell death, <clears throat> also kind of involved in it. That's a nutshell, what is the pathophysiology, so, okay? Now, let's look at the histopathology. When you look it under the microscope, what is the pathology? It's pathognomonic. You have lymphocytic infiltration with the germinal centers and virtue cells. Good to know. Sometimes examination can ask questions like that. When you look at the clinical features, early usually be like asymptomatic, and then goiter could be painless goiter, rubbery thyroid. Um, then you can have Hashimo or Hashi toxicosis, which is kind of like a you know toxic. Uh, crisis formation, usually like a transient picture during that time. And then late is the hypothyroid symptoms. Uh, pretty much we all know um, hypothyroidism can act to any organ, mainly your fatigue, you got uh, <clears throat> You got cold intolerance, constipation, uh, any system pretty much it can affect them. We just kind of wrote like some of them right there. Now, let's look into the investigations. What are the investigations we have to do? Again, it is a little bit complicated, right? In early stages, different, and the late stage is a different picture. So let's go back and look at the early. You can have hyperthyroidism picture in the early stage. What is, you got decreased TSH and then increase free T4 and free T3, right? And then this uh, situation changes. You can have a like, subclinical hypothyroidism. That means TSH is increased and the free T4 and free T3 is normal, right? Finally, he got this overt hypothyroidism picture where what happens is like increased TSH, the normal classic, and decreased 
three T four and three T three. So you actually need to do all through, or you know, first you check the TSA, and then three T four and three T three. Okay. Now, the antibodies, we talked about this again, the main mechanism, plasma cell antibody mechanism. So, three antibodies we have to check, my friends. Which one is? Let's start with the antithyroperoxidase enzyme antibodies, and then you got antithyroglobulin antibodies, and, and, and then you got TSH receptor blocking antibodies. Okay. Three, antibi three antibodies, like we have to check it. Very, very important. Now, imaging usually <clears throat> you can, I mean, you know, mainly you're just kind of looking at the goiter, the painless goiter, we already talked about it. Get an ultrasound, rule out the cancer, and if there's no nodule, then you might consider doing FNAC and all that. Okay. Now, let's come to the treatment. How do you treat it? Thyroid supplement, right? You get levothyroxine. Again, it's a lifelong treatment. What is the dose? 1.6 microgram per kg body weight, and then you can gradually increase it, okay? Then <clears throat> there is also, remember, I would definitely recommend giving like selenium supplement, and uh, so studies have shown some benefits in patients with Hashimoto's uh, um, <clears throat> uh, thyroiditis, so consider selenium supplement, the mood and a lot of things can see improvement. So how much selenium you should uh, give it, 50 to 100 microgram per day? Again, that's evidence-based uh, uh, treatment, okay? Now monitoring, again we all know, six weeks, start the treatment, monitor in six weeks. If you make any changes in the dose, you have to check it again after six weeks. Let's say everything come back to stable, six to 12 months, okay? So thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. And if you could please subscribe to our channel, it will be um, extremely uh, helpful to us and greatly, greatly appreciated because it takes a lot of effort from a lot of people make to make a presentations like this. And we wanted to finish the whole endocrinology. Um, thank you so much again. Have a blessed day.